round two of the Grand American Rolex Sports Car Series from the Circuit of the Americas. It's called the Grand Am of the Americas, presented by Gamesco and Total. Oh, they're bunched up. Fogarty on the pole, gets the lead on Jordan Taylor. Maymoreau has tucked to the inside. He looks for the lead early. Five wide as they go into oh, turn but one. They get together. They're going to push each other off this racetrack. GT split start Ferrari front row. It's Balzard from Pappas heading up into turn one. This looks much more orderly as these guys got it right. Not so much for the DP guys side by side at the apex, however. Emma Rojas flashes over the brow. Look at this, guys. We've Out been waiting for this moment. The two Taylor boys going side by side down into the break zone. Jordan on the left, Ricky on the right. Jordan had made a move on John Fogarty to get up to third. Now, Ricky having to defend from in the 90 car. Saw Jordan go through the S's with a really much nicer, cleaner line. It was gathering a lot of speed up. Obviously, he's racing. He wants some of his brother. And Scott Pruitt watching the monitors down here as well. As car oh. side by side. Uh, Let me uh, break it up, guys. We've got action on track here. We have a wreck. But he walks to the inside. Gets down there. Then he has to run the inside curve there. Gets a little loose. That pushes Alex out wide. He tries to get on the power. There's no grip out there. He turns it around, clips the right rear suspension. I think Brian Frizzell and the other Action Express car got through there unscathed. Let's take a quick look at the replay of the lead here. Here's Tom Long coming down the inside of Jim Norman, down into the brake zone. Nice, clean pass. Usually an indication it's too low. Let's see what happens here. Oh, big lock up, big spin. Paul oh. Dallalana going down the inside of Michael Marcel, getting it a little bit wrong. He's having to adjust. He won the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge race this morning. A little bit different machine he's with. Another wow. BMW <laughs> narrowly misses his teammate. Will Turner would have been sweating on that one. And he was part of a tangle. Watch the back of your screen. John and Edwards and Patrick Lindsay in the Porsche getting together. Watch as the 99 pulls into its pit. The front tire changer on the right side will circle around the front of the car. Watch the orange number three coming in. Pow! That could have been really ugly. Fortunately, it looked like that mechanic jumped back up and is okay. Memo Rojas getting really aggressive, antsy before the start. Good green. The leader determines when everyone goes, but once the green flag is displayed, you can pass anywhere on the racetrack. Look at this. Look at Osnegri defending from Max Angelelli, two of the toughest drivers in the business, going toe to toe, down into turn one. Here he comes up into turn one. The there. Oh, there. they still touch, there. they still touch. There. They're going to trade still paint there. here as they now get back on the power, accelerating down. Rojas on the outside. And Angelelli. Angelelli's right there. That's right, in the 10, Max the Axe Angelelli. Perfect setup by Maymo Rojas there. Dorsey really lined Christian Fittipaldi up nicely. Fittipaldi defended down into turn 20. Maymo is through and into the lead. There's your GT leader, the 63 Ferrari of Alessandro Balzan. Doing a great job of driving. He's really heads up with these cars around him. Out. That's what I really like. He told me he spends about 30 hours a week in that simulator working with typically seven engineers. What That's action we're seeing here. The 10 car once again beat the all one car. And oh, oh, look at this. the curb, loses the nose cone. Pruitt trying to get back on Angelelli. Hits the curb, nose is gone. Watch the height of Pruitt's car when he hits his curb. It's squeezed there by Angelelli, has to take to the curb, and he just leaps it. Hits those little sleeping policemen, as you called them, Bob, and he goes for a ride. Big spin here. Oh, damage there to the left yeah. rear corner. That was from the contact with Richard Westbrook just a short while ago. He's got a left side down. Now he's got rear. a flat left, yeah. Here we see it down into 15. Yeah. Westy gets in really deep, turns him around. He's going to get a stop and hold penalty for the action. And then we can see that there's damage to the rear of the car. The left rear is broken, Dorsey, it looks like. This is dangerous times for our leader right now because the other guys can make that pit stop. He's got to wait until he gets around there. And if it goes yellow before he does, pit lane would be closed. There it is, Cox. Oh, we're hearing it. That kills Angelelli. The 99 car is going to be in great shape. Pizzonia also got in and out. Well, as we see the green flag come down, that is the one car that didn't come to pit lane. The team thinking that they can make it at this point. Even if we don't get a caution, they told Brendan Hartley, you can start with a rich map, fuel map, to try and pull a gap. But once you do that, right now, whoa, we see the 90 car trying to go around the outside. Both cars still door to door as they go into the S's. And now it looks like Hartley's going to pull a little bit of a lead here. And this is the 44 car leading GT. And what a day for them. They got advantage too. They pitted just before that caution, so they leapfrogged to the front, but I'm not sure they're going to have the pace. Yeah, that's the first time that car's led all day. Andy Lally behind the wheel. 
Pruitt's down on the inside. Oh, it's going to be Andy Lally who turns oh, in. It is. Pruitt cleared him nicely. Yeah, I'll tell you, Andy Lally re-pedaling the Porsche. He's able to match speed with the Ferrari for now. The one thing that can happen here, if Lally can defend strongly enough for like two or three laps, will it allow Bill Orgel, who's currently in third in that BMW, to catch this lead duo? Lead is off. Oh, the leader's oh, right, rear. Off. right rear suspension gone on this car. It will not go on. It's broken the right rear. Somebody's helped it along. See the body work separated just behind the wheel. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, big contact. contact with the Audi. Yep. Look at the right rear. It's it's bent up inside the oh, wheel. Yep. Folded up. Wow. And so the, the wheel itself is gone, too. Okay. Cars in for the penalty. This is going to be game changing. And with that, there is your new leader. In fact, there is your current <laughs> one, too. You're not Alan Gurney. <laughs> You believe this story. And Scott Pruitt. Look at this. You can go side by side through here. This was beautiful racing, but ultimately there was going to be a little bit of a bump here, Dorsey. Yeah, you can do it. These guys went three three side by side. The 63 car, you know that rub we saw with the Lally car, the 44 car? He's going to get a stop on plus 60. So the leader in GT is going to be taken out of the lead by a penalty. Oh and Alex Gurney brings the Gainesco 99 Red Dragon onto the straightaway and ends a two-year drought with the inaugural victory at Circuit of the Americas. Brilliant jump by Alex Gurney. We stood the pressure perfectly. Hometown team does it. Wow. And the Billy Orvalin, what a day for Turner Motorsports. A double victory. After all of the heartbreak they suffered a month ago at Daytona, with one car totaled in practice, and a very difficult 24 hours. And here they come to Circuit of the Americas and win. Here are the unofficial results in Daytona Prototype. Just a brilliant performance there by Alex Gurney holding on under extreme pressure. Great call by the team to get that track position. Up on top of the GT standing, Bill Arberlin, Paul Dallalana did a great job. Got that Turner BMW up to the front. We didn't see that one coming either, but he made it to the finish. The Porsches get the two first victories of the year in GX, but this Mazda program, as soon as they continue to develop this car, expect it in victory lane.